All right. So then when... So he agreed that he was cheating at that time. And then... Um, then now I was fully with him. And then he engaged me in Bhagavad Gita paintings. He asked me to paint pictures for his Bhagavad Gita. And then I would do the same thing, showing him the sketches and then the color sketches. But then I asked him, I said, you know, I've given up everything. I rejected the whole society, even though they're making um, as much propaganda as they're making about you internationally in faxes and emails and telephone calls and istagosis. They're doing almost as much that about me. So now I've given, because I've left everything and come to you, so I've given everything else up for Braj Bhakti, for Gopi wow. Prem, to be with you, and now you're telling me to paint the Bhagavad Gita on the Battle of Kurukshetra? <laughs> <laughs> so like, was that a trick too? So he said, if you paint the Bhagavad Gita pictures, you'll get Braj Bhakti. In other words, it doesn't come by any sadhana, it doesn't come by anything except Guru's mercy. We do the sadhana to show him that we are sincere about serving him. And then we simultaneously pray for mercy. But it comes, when the mercy comes, that's when we get it. Just like um, Sankaracharya was going to give a class and all of his big scholars were there and some illiterate servant was on the other side of the river washing his clothes and it was raining, so the river was, had been raining, so the river was like overfloated, so he couldn't get there on time, so, but he wouldn't give the class. And everybody thought, we're the scholars, we should hear your class now, why are you waiting for this you know, laundry guy? Then finally he made it, carried in the swelling river, he carried the, his clothes high and he went through the river. Finally he arrived there and uh, Sankaracharya did something and all the Vedas started coming out of his mouth, even though he was illiterate. So then they understood why, because he was a sincere servant. So even if you, like Gurudev said, my Gurudev was, um, had a disciple, an Angamohan, who had tuberculosis, spitting out blood, and he stopped everything and was taking care of his own disciple. So I, meaning Gurudev, I told him, you go and preach and I'll take care of him, even though it was a risk to Gurudev's life. I'll take care of him. So Gurudev was cleaning up his stool and his blood and everything. He said, because I did that for my Gurudev and allowed him to preach and took that uh, worry off of him, um, he became so pleased with me that I'm sitting here today and you're all here hearing from me. Uh, so I'll show you the Bhagavad Gita paintings now. And then we'll go back to the Gita Govinda paintings because I wanted to be chronological. She, this young lady asked a very interesting question about do you dream, do you have any uh, realizations about your paintings or any, um, any can, you, can you share with us anything about... No, as a matter of fact, on the contrary, I once said to Gurudev when I was painting these paintings, I said, you know Gurudev, I feel like every time I make a stroke, I wait, of course this goes, all goes on very quickly, but every time I make a stroke, I say, okay, who's going to make the next stroke? Because I have no idea what the next stroke should be. And I can't go on. But there's nobody around me. I'm sitting alone in my room. And then I, th okay, I'll do the next stroke. It goes on fast, but every single stroke that goes on in my mind. No visions or anything. So, uh, even though I've been painting for 37 or 8 years, um, it's like that with every single painting. So I told Gurudev, I feel like I'm painting in the dark. I never know what the next stroke should be because this is a transcendental thing and it's out of my realm. And I'm starting with a white canvas. Even if I have a line drawing, a color sketch, still it's like that till the last stroke. He said, no problem, just paint by my light, which means just surrender to me and I'll take over the whole thing. But that's, of course, easier said than done. It requires a Advancement. And didn't Sri the Prophet say something similar to you? I have, and he, he said, I've created this Jadarani, uh, her artistry or something? Or I've made her a painter? Well, one devotee, Murlidhar, when he first joined, he asked, uh, was there something like that with Sri the Prabhupada? So when Murlidhar first joined, he turned out to be a great painter. But when he first joined, he asked Prabhupada, how can I paint like Jadarani? 
So Prabhupada said, I have taught her how to paint. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, <laughs> chanting while you paint. And then in 1977, in his quarters in Vrindavan, we showed him one painting. Um, and he said, in the beginning she could not paint, but by Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu, the uh, talent came out. Now we learn, that was 77, 76, now we learn in um, 86, 96, about 25 years later, when Gurudev's commenting on that verse, Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam Padasevanam, this is a verse by Pallad Maharaj. That's the first half of the verse. Then the second half of the verse is, one who engages in all these nine processes of devotional service, he is understood to be an intelligent person. That's why Prabhupada quoted that. By Shravanam Kirtanam, the intelligence and talent came out. So in this second line, um, Iti Pungsa Arpito Vishnu. Vishnu here means Pungsa Arpito. Arpito means giving everything, engaging in in full surrender. Vishnu. But Vishnu has two features. One feature is Vishaya Vishnu, and one feature is Ashraya Vishnu. So when one surrenders to Sri Guru, then he gets all the blessings. Otherwise, Krishna is not accepting any of his services. So um, by Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu in the service of Sri Guru, then he blesses that something will happen. So, showing you the Bhagavad Gita paintings. Um, this is the cover. And this one was done also through a series of countries. In Malaysia, on Gurudev's first world tour to Malaysia, maybe it was 97. Uh, 96 or 97, I forgot. Uh, Gurudev, just as in 1966, Prabhupada invited me to paint in his quarters. And I did that for many months. So Gurudev said I could paint on the porch of his room in the house of Malaysia. And then he would come out from the back door of his room every once in a while and give in, excuse me, instructions. He said actually Arjuna was blue, like Krishna. But he said it makes a good matching if he's gold and Krishna's blue. So he said I should keep him as golden because that's also how he's known. Then, Gurudev not only poses for Arjuna and Krishna, but he posed for the horses. Because <laughs> it was taking me a long time to get it right. You know, just how they were up, and their faces, and their eyes, and their mouth, and their teeth. Gurudev kept telling me, no, that's not the right teeth, it's not the right eyes, it's not the right forelegs. And he kept posing until I finally got it to his satisfaction. <laughs> then he personally told me that it's not a mistake that I made blue insides of the ears. He said, these are special horses of Krishna and they have sham colored inside ears. Now we even pose for Hanuman on the flag, like that. With, incidentally, the club round part going down, all coming from Gurudev. And then this here, if somebody wants to Ah, uh, okay. I don't know, is that take this the other one off? No, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Mahaprabhu said, okay, no one heard it. This is Srila Viswanath Chakrabarti Thakur writing his books like Bhagavad Gita with his handwriting here and Gurudev even said what the uh, pen should look like. It's just, you know, carved and then they make their own ink again and with a bucket, with this little spout there for drinking and uh, I showed him the kunj. And as you can see, it looks like somebody decorated, like you decorate here with everything around the archway, the lights. So when I showed him the kunj there, 
he said the kunj decorated himself because they are also fully conscious and they can make things look like anything they want. Like Vrinda Devi, who's in charge of the choreographer of what deers come out, what birds sing, what they sing, what trees are there, at what seasons, and what places where Radha and Krishna is going. So she'll order the, okay, such and such tree, now you bloom, such and such bees, now you hum. So under her direction, the kunj itself made the decorations as though a person had made them. Sometimes the people make them. She has Vanavasi's uh, uh, servants of Vrindadevi who decorate and place different paraphernalia in the kunjas for Radha and Krishna's pastimes. The manjaris do that, Nikunja Juano Ratikeli Siddhoi. But also the uh, forest does it itself. What is the English translation of kunja? Uh, forest grove. And I asked him once because I would read things in the Goswami's literatures that the trees are made of, some trees are made of uh, emerald trunks with sapphire leaves and ruby fruits and um, diamond flowers and other trees are made of diamond trunks with um, indranilla leaves and like that. They're made of all kinds of jewels. And sometimes the courtyards of the kunjas are made of um, jeweled mosaics. And I wanted to know if I should paint them like that. And Gurudev said, no, the meaning of this is that because jewels and diamonds and gold is the highest conception in the world of beauty and opulence. But you should make everything, and I asked him also about that because if you read certain stotras or um, prayers about Navadweep, you see that there are jeweled pavilions all over Navadweep where uh, Mahaprabhu was dancing with his party. And Gurudev said, no, don't do that. I asked him that with the Gornitai painting and with the Radha and Krishna and the, their associates paintings. And he, both times he rejected it and he said, no, just make it like a natural forest because our highest conception is jewels and gold and diamonds. So when it says it's made of that, what they really mean is it's made of more than that. But you can't imagine if it describes that it was just flowers, you can't imagine how beautiful it is. So it says it's made of diamonds so you'll know that it's more than that and inconceivable to your imagination. Which reminds me, during the painting of the Gornatai picture, Gurudev was saying that the uh, roots that are coming down from the branches of the tree are, because the trees are all fully conscious there, the roots are coming down and waving so that when Lord Chaitanya passes by, it'll be a nice breeze for him. And when sometimes when the creepers uh, wave in the wind. They're not waving because of the wind, but they're calling, like, you know, come on, like in India, the Indian people go like this, and the Western people go, go like this. So the creepers are going, looking like they're waving from the wind, but sometimes it's just because they're calling the deer over, not deer, sorry, the bumblebees over, to sit on them. They're like, like fanning in their own fragrance, because they're full of fragrance, and they're like fanning the fragrance out so the bees would know to come and sit on them and the bees would become so intoxicated with the praying of the smelling of the flowers which are also made of praying which are all coming out of Radha and Krishna and Vrindadevi or ra rather Radha and Vrindadevi that um, and Krishna that uh, they start singing and in intoxication they make beautiful uh, instrumental music and singing for Radha and Krishna and their associates as they're going through the forest. So that also has significance. The trees are also serving in the Gornitai painting. And um, I made, uh, previously he was more robust and Gurudev said, no, make him more, you know, thin and like austere. So we tried to do that. And other Bhagavad Gita painting is this here. Is it 
This is um, Sanjaya speaking to Dhritarashtra, the blind king, what's in his heart, what's taking place 90 miles away on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. It was, uh, Prabhupada had said he was like a TV in the heart of Sanjaya. And he's telling the blind king that there's no use in, in your sons even fighting because you're not going to win. He was trying to encourage him, but showing him at the same time that when Krishna is there as the master of all mystics, there's no possibility of victory on the other side. So all this is light and dreamy because it's coming as a vision to him out from Sanjaya's heart. Then one last painting for the Bhagavad Gita. This is um, Vyasdev, the spiritual master of Sanjaya, who's relating the Bhagavad Gita, giving Divya Dristi, and this also came under Gurudev's instructions, that some light should be coming out from Vyasdev's eyes. Dristi means vision. And Divya means transcendental. So his own vision is coming out from his eyes into the eyes of um, Sanjaya. As Gurudev said, paint by my light, or he can see by the light of his guru. So one disciple is able to have any capacity to do anything. Like two years ago, right here on this very floor in Badger, um, I asked Gurudev at the end of the class because he said that Brahma thought that he was stealing Krishna's cows and calves, but actually Yoga Maya had made him do it. He didn't, wasn't really doing it. Yo Krishna told Yoga Maya to um, inspire Brahma to steal. So I said, okay, Brahma wasn't doing it. And then Gurudev said, and in the material world, everybody thinks they're doing something, but nobody's doing anything. It's just the mode of nature. So then I asked him at the end of the class, suppose a devotee distributes a book, and he's not thinking, I distributed the book, but he's just thinking, oh, I just distributed a book, just casual nothing. Who actually distributed that book? So Gurudev said, Gurudev distributed it. You can't create a dry straw. Gurudev is doing everything. So similarly, if one has any capacity uh, in any preaching area or any bhajan area, it's only the grace of Guru. Um, Sri Guru Charana Padma, Kevala Bhakti Sadma. He's the only abode of all levels of bhakti, from Sadhana Bhas to uh, Prema Bhakti, Madanaki Mahabhav, touching that to become a manjari. It's all grace of Guru. And all this is Gurudev. The um, manuscript, everything is. All Gurudev's doing, and he saw it again from the sketch stage onward. Now we go to, um, back to Gita Govinda. Then when we were making this painting here, um, we showed it to him in uh, Houston when it was half done. Is Vasanti here? She was there. I don't remember what he said. We got it on tape, but he was uh, glorifying the pastime and this, the middle one? Yeah. this one, middle one here. And uh, what did he tell you when you showed him when it was a, at a very early stage? You showed him the photograph in a way. Do you remember? Spoke, um, about. Do you remember? I just remember that first we showed him this one. On the camera. Yeah, and camera. He said that, oh, she is so beautiful. Mm. Rana Rani is so beautiful. And, and uh, it wasn't just the painting, it was like he was seeing. seeing. Oh, yes, incidentally, although he glorifies the painting so much on so many occasions, a few years ago in Badger, we had, uh, there's always the Seva Kunj painting and the Manjuris in his room. But this day he said, when I see the pictures, I see so many defects. 
But when I see the same picture in my heart, I see no defect. And he also said, because I was telling you all the upsides, and that, these are the two, not downsides, but uh, he said, when you, when you look at this picture, the pictures of the mandris, then you're seeing general beauty. But if, when you see them in person, as soon as you see them, you'll faint. <laughs> So first we showed him this one, and he just said, oh, you know, oh, Srimati Radharani is so beautiful. And yeah. he was seeing her. Seeing the real thing. Right. And then on this one, the only thing I can remember right now is he, oh, asked, the asked, dress. he asked you to make the um, choli blue. Oh, yeah, and then I told him I couldn't. <laughs> what was the dress? He told, he told Change he the made, colors. Yes. Uh, make the, the choli blue. Oh, that's right. That's right. Because she always likes to be covered by Krishna. So I tried to make it blue, but because it was already so late in the painting, when it was blue, she just disappeared because of the type of background. Mm -hmm. So then he said, all right, make it the red, but make it a different kind of red than the skirt. So therefore one became pink and one became red. What is the story behind this? Uh, well, I will read to you. Uh, I mentioned the story of this in very brief when I was showing you the line drawing. But in the Gita Govinda, there's a whole chapter devoted to this, and I'll read it to you. After Krishna um, offended Radharani in the Rasa dance by being uh, surrounded by so many... The curtains just closed? Is that what happened? Yes. Shushi Radhusham Sundar Ki Jai. Shushi Gornit. Silent Arti, okay. So then Radharani left and then Krishna immediately became remorseful and began to search for her. This is one of the main features of Gita Govinda. So I'll read it to you, but first I'll tell you um, just the basic outline. That he's searching for her, feeling very bad that he offended her. And as he's getting more and more absorbed in separation and grief, he begins to get visions of her. And those visions come and go, like somebody in Bhava Bhakti, like Srila Raghunath Das Goswami is playing the part of a Bhava Bhakta. He's praying and crying that when will Srimati Radharani let me serve her, particularly let me serve her by um, when Krishna is painting her feet and um, Radharani, in order to increase the eagerness of Krishna, she says, she'll say to me, Oh, he's a Baal painter. He's a neophyte painter. He can't do very well. Uh, oh, Rati, you take it. You take the brush from him. So Rati Manjuri will go like that, push him aside. Krishna's completely helpless. You can see how he's controlled by the Manjuris. Com in complete anxiety, but he can't defend himself. So she takes the brush, because he's trembling. That's why he's not, so-called, not doing such a good job. So then Rati takes it away. Krishna is like, you took my service away. And look like helpless to get it back. And so very confidently, Rati Manjuri starts to paint her feet, the designs. All of a sudden, the paintbrush disappears, Radharani disappears, the scene disappears, and there's Raghunath Das Goswami on the banks of Radhakund alone. Then he begins weeping and rolling. And then the verse comes. And then another vision comes. Similarly, this is not only going on in Bhav Bhakti, where you get, you go from external consciousness to inner, then half inner, half outer, then back to external, then back to inner. That's because even in Bhav Bhakti, there's a slight obstacle in seeing Krishna perpetually. In praying, that obstacle is removed. Similarly, there's also so many obstacles because anything that's below the level of praying, including this material world, is there in the spiritual world in Prem, in Vastu City, in its perfection, and it's like pieces of it or reflections of it going down the line. Like this Shraddha, 
which is the beginning of bhakti, but that Shraddha is also in Prem. It's also in Madanaki Prem, but Shraddha to that level. There's Nistha to that level. Does that make sense? So, um, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, so Krishna's separation. Oh, right. So Krishna's feeling so much separation, so he's getting these visions, but they come and go. And then he's feeling her presence, but even in the presence of the vision, he's feeling like he's going to die in separation, and then the vision goes, and then another one comes. So I'll read to you how he's thinking and what he's praying, and you'll see that it won't, it won't be matching the picture for a while. Though that's the caption in the book, it won't be matching the picture. It starts matching the picture when he becomes so absorbed in the vision that he's seeing that just like when devotees do bhajan, they enter into their bhajan and enter, permanently enter into the mantra and permanently enter into the pastime. So now Krishna is so absorbed and then he gets a vision, he's now entering into it and he forgets that Radharani's not there. He's now there with her in his separation. Sri Krishna is describing his own condition of separation. Whatever I'm feeling in separation of Radha, she must also be feeling. How much anxiety and distress she must be going through. And my offense is the cause of this pain. She is suffering so much because of me. I do not know how she will express her anger, jealousy, and other feelings when I meet her again. What will she tell her intimate friends? She must be making allegations against me, saying, he's so heartless and cruel. On the other hand, I will say, you know, just like people imagine conversations here, why? Because janma diyasi etaha, as Gurudev is lecturing at night, everything here has its origin and completeness there. I will say, without you, my prosperity, my associates, my herds of cows and my good home, Everything seems sig insignificant to me. This is bhajan. Bhajanakriya. Really. Bhajanakriya, which begins here, doesn't stop there. I feel as if now, I feel as if I'm directly beholding the face of Sri Radha with his arched, creeper-like eyebrows. Her angry face resembles a red lotus flower surrounded by hovering bumblebees. Alas! When I continuously realize the direct presence, now he's realizing her presence in his separation. Now when I continuously realize the direct presence of Radha and deeply embrace her in the temple of my heart, why am I uselessly lamenting over her and why am I repeatedly searching for her, for her from forest to forest? In separation, Krishna is attaining a spurti of Radha and thinking, I see her here in my heart, then what is the point of lamenting? And still I'm lamenting, because she's not found here in the forest. Oh Radha, I abandon you to enjoy pastimes with other Brajagopis. Your heart is now full of jealousy towards them, because you consider yourself superior. You are depressed because you are superimposing faults upon me. You have left this place to go somewhere else. You know, I'm innocent. One minute he's saying, I'm at fault, I did it. Then I'm, I'm innocent. You know how the whirlwind of contradictory emotions. What can I do? If I knew you had gone, I would have touched your feet and pacified you and begged you for forgiveness. Alas, it seems that you're repeatedly coming and going. Why do you not impetuously embrace me as you did before? being impelled by the exhilaration of love. So this is separation and meeting going on side by side. Oh, beautiful one, please forgive me. I'll never offend you again. Allow me to see you at once. I'm reeling from the pain inflicted by Kandarpa. Hey, Cupid. Oh, Cupid. Are you inflicting pain on me with such fury because you think I'm Lord Shiva? Why have you become so harsh? This is not the king of snakes, Vasuki, upon my chest. It is actually a necklace made of lotus stems. 
The blueness of my throat is not the effect of poison, like Lord Shiva had, but a garland of blue lotus flowers. This is not an ash from a funeral pyre smeared on my body. It's sandalwood paste applied in the absence of my beloved. So go away. You've caught me by mistake. So he's mad. And this is what's going on in this painting. And he's now so absorbed in separation that he's now living in his vision. Oh, Radha, I see that you have... And going to that exact place where he knows she's going to get her water. And she's going there because he knows... He knows that she's going to be there. And he's saying, Oh, Radha, I see you have two big, heavy pots. Can I help you carry one? No, thank you. I'm not interested in the debauchee. I'm a very chaste married lady. Then we come to... Is, that, is he contemplating that or that's what's happening? Radha Both. Radha Both. <laughs> because Krishna is Adwayagyan Paratattva. One without a second. His thoughts are non different from him. If he's thinking, that's the same reality. We understand that? It's there, it's real. It's there, it's real. Or it can be happening at another time. Because every painting has so many pastimes attributed to it. No, not that one. Now, after, Radha, after Krishna tries to pacify Radharani, and then she rejects him and go, he goes away, she laments, <coughs> or because hundreds of thousands of pastimes, or millions, or unlimited, can go with each scene. Um, so here she is sitting at Radhakund, or in a kunj, at Radhakund here. And she's, now she's at the other end. Krishna offended her because there were so many other gopis. She left, she went to lament in a kunj, and he's not coming to meet with her. So on her side, just to be brief, she's imagining and she's telling her Saki, Krishna wasn't speaking to anybody, he's just thinking to himself. So Radharani sends her Saki to go and bring Krishna, that I can't be without him. Even though he offended me, I can't live without him, so please bring him here. And the Saki leaves, then the Saki comes back, and by whatever the Saki says, Radharani is imagining it to mean that I went to see Krishna and he's with, not even interested in you, he's with so many other gopis now. So she's imagining this. And she's thinking that now some very beautiful young gopi is doing this, that, and the other thing with Krishna. And now they're doing this. And now Krishna's doing that. And now Krishna's saying that. And now she's smiling. And now her hair is being loosened. But actually, the more she's uh, lamenting in this way, She's, um, you know, just like when you see a movie, you start thinking it's you. So actually she's remembering the pastime of her and Krishna. And she's getting more and more absorbed in that, and it's actually happening on the spot. So she's living it just then, just like Krishna's living it in separation. And still he's not coming, because he can't come, because he's lost, he's getting lost everywhere, just wandering, or... He's in one of the Astasakti Gabavs is when you're stunned and you can't move and, or you're totally devastated like death. So he's feeling separation from her, she's feeling separation from him, but they can't meet. She's, and she wants to go out to meet with him, but she can't move her legs either. So she's asking the Saki to bring him, but the Saki didn't, and she's imagining that this is the Saki's report. So she's actually living in the intimate pastime with Krishna, imagining that it's happening with another gopi so that she's simultaneously feeling separation and simultaneous Madanaki Mahabhav rapture. So here. And then she's saying the same thing as when as if she's rejected Krishna and he left because there's all different pastimes. I hope it's not getting 
too much round and round. So here she is at Radhakun, and Radhakun we know is is not different from Radharani. So as her emotion is all in turmoil, the water is also in turmoil. Uh, so she's, I'll read this. Alas, alas, my immaculate youth and beauty are all in vain because Hari has not come to the forest at the appointed time. I have been cheated by my friends, so to whom can I turn for shelter now? O oh, Saki, you said I will go and bring him at once. Just wait here. But even you have betrayed me. You said you would be returned to the grove before moonrise, but now the moon has risen to its highest point in the sky. Somebody asked, I think it was you, Madhavananda Prabhu, just now, um, we have a moon here, we have a sky, we have earth. Does that have anything to do with the reality? So Radha and Krishna are the only reality the moon is there. Did you ever buy a thing? So, I remember so many years ago they used to sell these rocks and make a fortune selling these rocks that had painted paint rocks and they would basically like a conversation piece. Huh? They're yeah, rock concepts. So they were nothing but rocks. It was all cheating. But to be like a conversation piece. Or people buy like vases to be like huh? Welcome. Yeah, any welcome. So it has no purpose but as a conversation piece. So the moon and the bumblebees and everything are expanded from Radha and Krishna as their uh, Vrindavan, or Radha Vrindavan, which is as worshipable as Krishna, because they inspire their pastimes, they give them something to talk about, something to compare Krishna with. Oh, Krishna is just like the black bee. It goes from one flower to another, and as soon as it gets the honey from one flower, it just leaves it as though it didn't exist and goes on to the next flower. Krishna's the same way. That's why he's called Madhusudana. So the moon is here uh, just for the pastimes. There's no need for the moon in the sky because, as it says in the Gita, in that abode there's no need for sunlight or moonlight or electricity. <coughs> My impeccable youth and beauty are all worthless. So there it's there in the Siddha, in Siddha Loka, and in Sadhan Bhumi, it should be our, the whole idea is to bring us to that, that without surrendering to my Gurudev, without serving him, and then my life is valueless. Only, Gurudev said, only when we feel that kind of separation and uselessness in relation to our Gurudev can it ever come to be for Radha and Krishna. So my impeccable youth and beauty are all worthless because if they had any value, he would definitely be here. I am ruined. How unsteady I am in separation from that per person for whom, loving union, I am sitting in this deep forest in the dreadful darkness of night. I lost all composure and senses. Where can I go? It is better to die. How much separation can I tolerate? I won't read the... Um, the description of her imagination in the public context, but you can read it on your own. Um, so, yes. Yes. Um, Vrindavan Prabhu is asking about the color of her sari. Generally, she wears red, which is um, the color of anurag, or great attachment. Um, but we made it a little off red. Uh, just to be variety. And we asked Gurudev, is it okay if we make different kinds of colors sometimes? And he says she can wear different kinds of colors sometimes, and sometimes according to the moon, she'll wear different colors. If it's a full moon, she'll wear <coughs> lighter colors so she can merge with the light sky uh, so that nobody sees her. Um... Am I supposed to read this out loud? Oh, oh, I see. Okay, so uh, we're almost coming to the end of the class. Um, so if it's dark moon night, then she'll wear black or dark blue and wear uh, sapphire jewelry and make lots of musk on her face. So she merges with the dark night so that nobody will see her. 
going out in the forest. And in this, in this song of uh, Oh Radharani Come to the Swing, Julian Yatra time, she's wearing five, five colors clothes. You know, it, it's so interesting to hear these... Louder? It's, it's so interesting to hear these explanations of the paintings. Uh, when we buy the prints, like we've had these prints available, some of them for a long time, isn't it possible to print on the back of them at least some of the explanation or distribute a flyer that gives the, uh, the uh, Leela explanation? Well, this is a very elaborate explanation, but for, for these paintings, we have one-page explanations, brief, as uh, skeletons or outlines, and you can delve further. Other people can tell you where to get more information. But we do have especially... Uh, we have posters now of... Where are the three posters? Uh, the, you saw the Seva... Oh, yes, thank you. You saw the Seva Kunj one. And we have... We have a Venu Geet. Uh, soon we'll, we have G clays also, which look exactly like the painting. But uh, I don't have any here, but uh, we can... They can be gotten... Uh, Maybe somebody can make an announcement. There is a website for that. Oh, I know you can just go to Bhakti store. The are just the same quality, you know, just yeah, this is a this is just a poster, but the G clays look exactly like the paintings. And this you can see, even though this is just a poster printed in India, it's very very close to the original. And we also have these the same size as the painting. And the, and the explanations that someone. And we also have Xerox. Oh, oh, this one showed. We also. Frame one there. Oh, this is a framed one. This is uh, from Nanda. This is we stole this from Nanda Gopal Prabhu's house, <laughs> just to show how nice they can look in nice frames. Bhakti Store dot com. What about it? You can order G clays, or if you want to order um, uh, large quantities of posters later, you can order them from Bhakti Projects. Um, you can see this Vambar Prabhu, like if you um, are doing a lot of preaching uh, to any communities where you live, you can order wholesale posters from this Vambar. And if you want to just get any here, you'll have them here also, down there, down the hill. And, and descriptions. And then you can Xerox the descriptions, so when you give out the posters, Four anniversaries, birthdays, bar mitzvahs, graduations, <laughs> initiations uh, for temples, weddings. You can Xerox the um, descriptions as well, especially for new people. We asked Gurudev in Malaysia when we first had these printed. Um, Gurudev said, um, for a very long, long time, he said, these pictures are so valuable because you can, you can understand why they're so valuable. They came out of Gurudev's heart. And in fact, for Seva Kunj, he said, actually this did not come from my heart. It came from the heart of Rupa Goswami. And actually it didn't come from the heart of Rupa Goswami. It came from the heart of Krishna, because he's thinking, I have to do something. But actually, it didn't come from the heart of Krishna. It came from the heart of Srimati Radhika, because she inspires him to think certain ways. Um, but uh, But... To this world, it came from the heart of Srila Gurudev. So, um, so Gurudev said in Malaysia that these paintings are so valuable, they're so rare, Durlava. For such a long time, they were, they were never available, and now they, were, now they are available. So then I asked him in Australia, because I'm always on the mental plane, what did, what did you mean by that? So I said, what did you mean by that? That you don't want them to be available, or that you, because they're so confidential? or that you want it to be available, or who can we give them to? So Gurudev said, anybody who likes them, you can give it to them, because shraddha, or faith, makes the thing valuable. So anybody who will appreciate it. Can we hear an explanation of this? Uh, Venugit. Yeah, Venugit, there's a... Yeah, the G-clays you can get life size even. Um, so Venu Geet is very interesting. I'll just be very brief about it. If you read chapter 21, 
if you read chapter 21 of Prabhupada's Krishna book, or if you um, read Gurudev's uh, either first edition or uh, that is his lectures of Venugit or the, the English translation of his Hindi Venugit, which has this picture on the cover. And this, this is, I can't even begin to tell you how confidential this particular picture is. By, I can't even tell you why. But one day. Uh, anyway, so the whole Gopi Geet book is in here. Because the gopis are not in the forest, they're at home. And they're lamenting that all the other residents of Vrindavan, like the cows and the calves and the deer and the Jamuna River and the clouds and the Govardhan and the rocks and the calves and the, um, yeah, the Kalindi and the um, demigods, demigoddesses and the... Uh, those girls, Palinda girls, they're all relishing Krishna's uh, association all day long. But we're home and we're so afraid uh, of abuse from society and we're so involved with chastity to husband that uh, we never get Krishna's association. And although they're always having it, that's one of the natures of um, Mahabhav is that they give their they have a certain love for Krishna and they think everybody else has the same love. And they see Krishna always, this is Anurag, they see Krishna always, but they think, I've never seen him before. Every moment is the very first moment, so there's no tiring. In fact, Prabhupada said, every moment is newer than the previous moment. So, the gopis are lamenting and glorifying all the uh, residents of Vrindavan like the cows who you can see that they have um, and Vrindavan Prabhu from Hawaii has the original painting because Gurudev goes there so many months a year so it's in Gurudev's room so um, you can see that the grasses, the bunches of grasses are hanging out of the cow's mouth um, because the cow is now hearing Krishna's flute playing so it's ears and then Gurudev, oh actually Gurudev also posed for this painting. He, the ears, the ears went up straight like cups and they're taking in the nectar of Krishna's flute playing in the upraised cup-like ears. And then the sweet flute, which is Krishna's heart, which is the gopis love for him, is coming um, into the ears, through the ears into their heart. And then the cows in Vatsalya Bhav are embracing Krishna in their hearts. And then the calves, if you look closely, in the back you see the calf is underneath the cow's body because it would be drinking the milk from the udders of the cows, but it neither swallowed the milk nor did the milk fall out. The milk is like just hanging in the mouth and dribbling out from the sides because the calves are also hearing Krishna's flute playing. And Gurudev said, you have to have that calf there. And uh, so it's just dribbling. It can't swallow the milk and it, the milk's not falling out. It's just hanging because the um, ca calves have also lost all external consciousness. And then Gurudev also said that Baladev should be up front because Baladev is elder, so he's like a father. So he's a mixture of coward boy and Vatsalyabhav. And so the elder shouldn't be there when the husband and wife are going to be together, what to speak of the paramour. So he's going on ahead to give Krishna leeway there in the middle. But you can see that he's looking uh, back. It means he's not seeing back, but he's knowing what's going on. And all the other elderly coward boys are uh, going along with Baladev. Now I asked Gurudev, Baladev's holding a uh, bugle, bugle, which comes from bugle generally we associate with the horn of the uh, cow, of the bull. The bull? Yeah, the bull. So, uh, not a, it's not a bugle, it's a horn. Buffalo. buffalo horn. Buffalo, that's it. The buffalo's horn. So, isn't that like violence to take the buffalo's horn? So, Gurudev said, no, it looks like a buffalo's horn, but it's made of leaves. And therefore you see that it's green. Green buffalo horn. Now, you also see 
a flower, a yellow karnikar flower in Krishna's ear. Now that also came from Gurudev. It says that he wears a karnikar and a flower. That's in the book. But Gurudev showed us what the karnikar flower looked like. It looks kind of like a, a bell. And then Gurudev was putting it from one ear to the other ear of himself, turning in different ways, that if the gopis are... You know how if you're, you're trying to get... Like if you want to have a picture of yourself, you're trying to get like the best... Angle. So, depending on where the gopis are, Krishna is always showing this is the side with the flower. Because Gurudev said he wants to look very debonair, like a, you know, like a casual guy. He wants to look really debonair for, to attract the girls like a playboy. And so he has it on one ear, on the side that the gopis are. Um, and also... Somebody suggested, because he has a top knot, and on the top knot it's described in the Venu Geet that uh, the peacock feathers are there like a rainbow. So I brought, you know how sometimes you can buy in, um, uh, what is that, Bazaar in Vrindavan? Loy Bazaar, you buy the peacock fan that you give to the deity. So I brought one, and I gave it to Gurudev, I said, could you please show me where Krishna has it in his hair? And he did it on the side. Top knot on the side, peacock feathers on the side. Debonair. And facing Radharani. And the ropes. Uh, he, Krishna has two ropes. One in his hair for binding cows and of cows' legs. And one for lassoing cows when they get straight. And the reason he has that is to show the gopis that I want to bind you also. Um... So, I mean, he doesn't do it that way, but they know the inner meaning. Because everything that Krishna does has the inner meaning. Um, what about the coward boys in the back? Thing? Coward boys in the back, right. So the coward boys in the front are going ahead to get out of the way. And the coward boys in the back, in order to hold Krishna up, Gurudev said, he, he posed for them also. Krishna, Krishna, look! Look at us! See what we're doing. You know, we're doing some play thing. So that Krishna would slow down. So that leaves a lot of space between the back gopas and the front gopas. And in the meantime, the gopis who are in their houses became so absorbed in their bhajan that uh, they ended up in their bhajan. They ended up in the mantra. The mantras were describing Krishna in the uh, forest. And we know that the mantra is not a mantra. Um, hopefully somebody who's giving a class, maybe you can ask the next people who are giving class, to ask what are the five stages in chanting the mantra, either the Hare Krishna mantra and particularly the Gayatri mantra. That uh, the mantra is not a prayer, but it's actually the deity of the mantra, is the mantra. So the deity is Krishna in Vrindavan. So their mantra contained all the things that they were singing about, and so they entered into the mantra by absorption, thus they entered into the forest, they entered into the kunj, and one of the verses, akshan bhutam palamidam na param vidama, uh, is that anyone who, who has eyes, the perfection of their eyes is when they see, um, well, externally, when they see Krishna and Balaram, because they're trying to hide the fact that they're just interested in Krishna, so they say Balaram's name too, so nobody will criticize. When they... The perfection of the eyes is to see Krishna and Balaram as they're going through the forests playing the flute. And then the deeper meaning by our acharyas, as Gurudev gave us, is that the perfection of the eyes is to see uh, Radha and Krishna. That's the deepest meaning. First it's Krishna and Balaram, then Krishna alone, if it was the gopis, in the gopis mood, and then Radha and Krishna, if it's the manjari mood. The reflection of the eyes is to see Radha and Krishna, because now the gopis are there. Radha's there, her assistants and associates are there, and now they're exchanging glances. Um, so this is the perfection of the eyes, and anyone who doesn't see this picture, in real, for real, anyone who doesn't see them exchanging glances, they, their eyes are useless, and therefore their head, might as, their head is also useless, and therefore they might as well have their heads struck down by a thunderbolt and just be dead, because there's no purpose in that life. 
So real bhajan is to think. We'll know when we're doing bhajan if when we actually start thinking like that and weeping like that, that if I don't get your darshan, your pure service, then uh, my life has no value and I might as well be dead. The so, man, the hmm? manjari, uh, foremost manjari in red, is she looking at Srimati Radhika or? She's looking at Srimati Radhika because Radhika. she's inclined towards Srimati Radhika. Radhika first, then Krishna. And when you get really close, especially if you can get a big G clay, like even me who did the painting, when I was at um, Krishna Bhamani Didi's house in Ojai a couple of weeks ago, uh, whenever I was talking to anybody or doing anything, I just kept going like that to her big G clay on the wall because it like just pulls you right there and it's like the scene is really there. So if you look close, you could even see it on this poster though it's small, that gopi who's standing next to Radharani, she, you can see about three fingers coming around the side of Radharani, this side of Radharani. You can see three fingers. So that gopi who's in the front uh, is holding on to Radharani's waist. Um, and when we were in Delhi, I was finishing... See, this has a painting on top of a painting. Maybe you saw the painting uh, in 19... Uh, year 2000 or something, or in the 90s. They printed the first Venu Gita in Hindi and, uh, and in English. And it was a different painting. It looked just like that, but it was different. It's because in 1996, I finished the painting and it was printed in Gurudev's book. But then in 2000, they were doing the reprint from the translation of Gurudev's Hindi book. And so I painted a painting over that to make it better. And I'll tell you some things Gurudev said about that too. So anyway, in the, in the underpainting of this, in 1996 in Delhi, 95, sorry, in Delhi, 95, because that's when I was leaving. Um, that's when I was cheated by him and I allowed myself to be cheated. Um, uh, but anyway, we were in uh, Pornim's house in Delhi, and I showed him that here, this uh, assistant gopi has her hands around Radharani's waist. Is that okay? And Gurudev said, yes, because she's thinking, if I don't hold Radharani's waist, then her waist will break, because it's so small and dainty, and Radharani, when she sees Krishna, she loses her balance and might fall over, and thus her waist may may break, so she's holding it. And that's why the manjaris tie uh, flower... Um, am I going to go to hell for telling all this? No. They, why They wear flower... Um, be flower belts made of flower tassels because they want to... so that her waist won't break also. That's one of the reasons. And the water is coming to... And the water also... Uh, the gopis are lamenting that we never get to offer Krishna flowers, but the Jamuna River is, with her wave-like hand, she's offering Krishna flowers. And her water is also going around Krishna's feet. And Gurudev also approved of that. The water is offering obeisances to Krishna's feet there. And the deer, in the underpainting, if you look in the old Hindi version, the black deer was... Um, Oh, I forgot. The deers were in different places. And Gurudev said, remember where? Hey, there's one deer there and two deers there. But uh, the deer was in different places. And Gurudev said, move the deer in such a way that the, um, the black husband deer will be right behind the golden wife deer. And because the, the gopis lamenting that our husbands don't let us go. I'll have to tell you something about that really heavy. If you're a spouse, either husband or wife, it's a really heavy story. Or if you're a relative or a friend, listen to this story. Um, okay. So, um, uh, so the gopis are lamenting that our husbands stand there with sticks and we can never get out. But the, um, the deer's husbands, they're thinking that oh, our wife is so much more advanced than us, we should just follow our wife. They know much, they're, they're much closer to Krishna. We should just follow their footsteps. And so the gopis are lamenting that their husbands follow them. Um, and our husbands are against it. So Gurudev was telling the story of um, Vamandev. 
And uh, I think I've told all, I'm going to tell about this if you want to relax. So um, we're telling the story of Vamandev that um, Sukracharya didn't want Bali Maharaj to give Vamandev the vow that I'll give you three steps of land because he knew that he would take, he knew that he was Vishnu and he would take the three full steps. So um, he was determined, because this is material thinking, if I give to Krishna, I'll be the loser. If I give to Guru, I'll be the loser. So this bogus material spiritual master was thinking, if my disciple gives everything, gives the three steps to Vishnu, he'll take it all and I won't have a place to live. So I have to do something to stop it. So he had mystic power, so he made himself very small and he uh, went into the spout of water, the, the water jug, that if you pour the water to confirm the, um, the vow, you pour the water and you drink the water. So Sukhachari was supposed to perform the ceremony, but he was against it. In fact, he disappeared into the spout. So Vamandev said, don't worry, I'll help you perform it. I'll help you with the vow. So, because he's a Brahmin anyway. So, Sukracharya stuck himself right where the cup meets the spout. So, uh, Bali Maharaj was trying to pour the water out and no one was coming because he was sitting in there. So, uh, Bali Maharaj said, oh, there seems to be a little obstruction there. So he took a straw and stuck it in. And instead of water coming out, blood came out because he stuck it in his eye. So Gurudev said, Actually, he was already blind because he had an eye facing towards the material world. So, anybody who tries to obstruct the bhakti of his husband or wife or relative or friend, it's understood that he's already blind in one eye and he will become blind in one eye for obstructing. He said, so you should be very careful. You should say to your spouse or relative or child or parent, oh, I'm so happy you're doing this. I bless you. I'll give you all help. Otherwise, you become blind in one eye. Okay, so any questions, final questions, because it's very late. Yes? Um, I just noticed on all your paintings that Radharani doesn't have a ring on the